Greetings pet lovers, Bridget here with First Street Pets and today we're going to talk about how pet microchips work. So I recently realized as I was writing and creating some more content on lost pet recovery that I have a video on microchip registries and how they work and how to choose one and I also have a video on what to do when your microchipped pet becomes lost but I didn't have any content specifically on how microchips work so I'm going to explain that all in detail today. So why should you microchip your pet? It does surprise me that there are many many pets out there that are not microchipped and their families know about chipping but they're just not interested. So here are some facts that will hopefully incentivize you to get your pet chipped if you haven't already. It provides a lifetime identification for your pet. The microchip is implanted under the skin, it's in there for the life of the pet, and the registration can be changed to do move or change a phone number. It pretty much lasts forever. It's really cheap insurance. It doesn't cost that much to get it done, and should anything happen, you can be contacted and get your pet back as quickly as possible so they won't become lost in free roaming cat populations, they won't be taken in by another person and just kept because there's no owner known, or they won't get lost in the shelter system and end up getting transferred to another city or state or adopted by another person. Microchips are universal, although there are different brands and manufacturers and registries, the chips are all basically the same. The scanners are all universal, so anywhere your pet goes and gets picked up, any bed or shelter, anyone who has a scanner, that number can be read and tracked and your pet can be returned to you. Now you may think my pet has a collar with an ID tag, so why should I need that? Well, of course, we recommend collars and ID tags, especially for dogs who should be wearing a collar anyway. But those things can come off. The tags can wear out. I have seen tags where the numbers were illegible after a while, or maybe the number's no good, or it's a license tag and you can't get a hold of anybody to track the number. So again, whatever other systems you have of protection for your pet, the microchip is just another one that everyone should have. Where do you purchase a microchip? Well, most people will purchase them at their veterinarian. There will be a charge for purchase and implantation, which can range from $50 and on up to, just depends on how much your veterinarian charges for a visit and for providing a service. The chips themselves can be purchased from some of the manufacturers in small quantities like one to five while others require you to purchase a large batch like the companies that deal with veterinarians and shelters only they're not interested in selling one or two to members of the public you can also buy them at an animal shelter or rescue or any place where they provide microchipping there are also some mobile clinics that you will see sometimes outside of a feed store or a pet store the kind of clinics that provide vaccines will often also provide microchips and this is a good way to get it done quickly usually without an appointment and often very inexpensively so how is the chip implanted? The microchip is about the size of a grain of rice and it is inside of a syringe. So if you've ever given blood and seen one of those big syringes, I did it once, fainted, um, but that's what they look like. So it's inside of a needle and they are sanitary. They're each wrapped up only for one use. And the chip goes under the skin of the pet in an injection. At least in the United States, microchipping is not considered a medical procedure, so anyone can do it. However, I do recommend that you have it done by someone who is experienced. So if you have a reason to go to your vet anyway, go ahead and have the microchip implanted at that time. A good time for implantation, which is common in shelters and rescues, is at the time of spay-neuter surgery. Because all these procedures are being done at once, the animal is anesthetized, and they can do it, and they don't even feel it. It is important that the chip be implanted by someone who is very experienced, so that it causes the animal minimal pain, and so that it's done correctly. There are a lot of things that can go wrong in microchipping, although they usually don't. I don't want to scare you. There is a chance when you pull the needle back out that the chip falls out with it if you don't follow proper procedures for installing a microchip. 
if the needle isn't handled properly by the technician installing the chip, the end of it could become dirty and could give your pet an infection. I have heard of that happening. Again, it's rare, but it is one of the possibilities. So very important to have someone who is implanting the chip, who knows what they are doing under clean conditions. Once implanted, the chip needs to be registered, and I will link to my article about registration down below. So please check that out for all the details. Very important to register the microchip. By itself, the chip, all it contains is a barcode, which is a number. It's just a code number. It doesn't mean anything until you register it. You need to go online or call or fill out paperwork or do whatever the process is, for wherever you want to register it to make sure that the information is correct. It is a good idea to also check back from time to time to make sure that the information is current and correct. One of my cats had a microchip for years that I had registered and when I purchased my own scanner a few years ago and I scanned all my cats to make sure I had the numbers correct, his number was not correct. It was off by one digit and so the number I had registered for him wasn't his chip. So very important to keep track of this stuff, make sure that everything is correct and that the information on the registry is correct because one typo and your phone number won't work and they won't be able to get a hold of you. A question that people ask a lot, a lot, a lot is, are microchips GPS? And the answer is no. I wish they were. We all wish they had that capability, but a microchip does not have GPS. Now there are other GPS options like collars and tags for pets, which I will link down below some information on that if you want to look into it. But because of the way the technology works, it isn't possible. GPS devices require an energy source like a battery. That's why if you're using GPS on your phone, you drain the battery quickly because it's constantly connecting with the GPS satellites and that requires a lot of energy. The GPS collars and tags need to be recharged. Some of them need to be recharged every couple of days. The newer ones can last up to 20 days, but still definitely not forever. They do need to be recharged so that they will work properly. So if you want to use GPS, definitely look into those devices as I've linked below and see if there's one that'll work for you and your pets. But the microchip is a different kind of identification. It's just a number and a barcode. It is not a GPS or any other kind of an electronic tracking device. Here are some common myths about pet microchipping. The one I hear all the time, which is absolute nonsense, is that microchips cause cancer. Now anybody can get cancer. Any person, any animal can get cancer. There may be a reason for it, there may not. It's a very, very broad spectrum of disease. The studies that purport to prove that microchips cause cancer use mice and rats. If you've ever had pet mice and rats, which I have, they make wonderful pets, they all get cancer. If they live long enough, which sadly isn't very long, maybe two, three years, they will get cancer and it will kill them. So claiming that the microchip which was inserted in the animal caused the cancer is kind of ridiculous. Now, while there can be issues or side effects with any kind of a shot or procedure, as I've mentioned earlier in this video, if it's not done properly, there could be some complication or it may not work the way that it should. That is definitely not a reason to not microchip. Another myth that I hear a lot, unfortunately, from the owners of missing pets. They didn't chip their pet because they said, my pet is indoors only. Okay, but now they're missing. So when a pet goes missing, it's an accident. It's like a car accident. Nobody meant for that to happen, but it did, unfortunately. So this is like insurance. You pay your car insurance every month, even though you don't have an accident but you pay it so that it's there for you when you need it. It's the same with a microchip. You get a microchip, you keep it registered, something may happen, you never know. I've seen so many different kinds of scenarios where pets have gone missing, where someone came home and left the door open while they were unloading groceries, where the windows were open and a cat pushed a screen out, where a dog got startled by something and jumped out the window and ran away. There's 101 things that can happen to cause a pet to go missing. 
If they have a microchip, it's just that much better of a chance that they'll get back home to you and quickly. Another myth that I hear is that you don't need to register it. And as I've said already about a thousand times in this video, you absolutely do. But people still believe this. They think the vet will have the information for you. The shelter will have the information. Now, while some of them may, most do not. And you don't want to be relying on someone else for this information. Why get the chip if you're not going to follow through and make sure that it's going to work for you? Most vets do not keep registration information. Some of them don't even enter the chip number in their database. They sell you the chip, implant it, and they tell you that it's your responsibility to register it. So if someone calls the vet who implanted the chip, they probably won't have any information. Now, a lot of shelters and rescues will register it for you and may have the information in their database, but just as many do not. So you can absolutely not count on that. You need to take care of the registration yourself. Now, one of the reasons why some folks don't want to register is because they believe they have to pay a lot of money. Now, as you'll see in my other video about the top five microchip registries, there are a variety of companies out there providing this service. Some charge and some don't. But one thing is for sure, you do not have to pay a yearly charge. People who get those bills in the mail are always confused, thinking that the information will be removed from the chip. This is not true. Once you register it, it stays there forever until you update that information. And there are registries like Found Animals, which I highly recommend, which are totally free and can be done online in minutes. So that's something you can do yourself. As soon as you get home from the vet or wherever you had the chip implanted, get that information on there and protect your pet. One really crazy myth that I actually saw on YouTube. So when I started creating my channel and this content, I wanted to see what content was already out there. So I knew what people were looking for and what maybe there was a lack of. And some of the videos I saw on lost pet recovery were just crazy. One of them involved using a stud finder, you know, like the thing you use in your house to find a pet's microchip. This is absolute bunk. There's no reason why a stud finder would react with a radio frequency microchip in a pet. And besides, it's not gonna give you the number. So I don't know why anyone would want to do this, but there must have been some logic for the person making the video. It is extremely important if you are scanning an animal for a chip, if you're working in a vet, shelter, rescue, that the scanner be in good working condition, that it has good batteries, and a good way to test this is to have an extra chip on the side, like I have one that's in a bit of clear acetate on a keychain that I can just check anytime with the scanner to make sure it's working. And you wanna make sure that you are scanning correctly. There's a whole process to that for folks who work in the business. And then the number will come up and you'll be able to check that number and hopefully contact the owner. But there's no reason to use a stud finder to see if a pet has a microchip. So what are your opinions on microchips and what are your experiences? I would love to hear about it. Please comment below and let me know what you think. Please check out the other articles and videos that I've mentioned. And I hope this is helpful to you in understanding the purpose of microchips and how you can get one and register it and the importance of having all your pets microchipped and registered. Thank you for watching today.